I know that some of you, well, a lot of you, were disappointed that there was really no new information in Entertainment Weekly's coverage of WandaVision. Some adorable photos, which we'll discuss, and there is some information, a little bit, a slow drip, which we'll also go over. But I feel the true purpose of this coverage, which really was not that much. Even like, usually, when they, they had three different articles, and usually they'll have like, they'll like breadcrumb out the information across all three. And instead, in the main article, they just requoted that main article in the second two articles. Or one was an article, well, they weren't really articles, but in the second two pieces. It was weird. But I believe the true purpose behind this Entertainment Weekly cover story was to get WandaVision some awards. I believe this is the beginning, well, they're at least positioning themselves for an Emmy and Golden Globes uh, Oscar, I mean, uh, awards campaign. Pretty exciting! Wouldn't you love to see WandaVision get some recognition like that? No other Marvel movie has been able to do it. Black Panther got a lot of nominations. I'm talking about wins. What if WandaVision were the new Mrs. Maisel or Game of Thrones uh, during the television, you know, awards sections? Wouldn't that be fantastic? As you guys like to say, it's what she deserves. All right, so yes, we're still in a holding pattern, Wanda stands, because today's Entertainment Weekly article did not include a release date for WandaVision. They even acknowledged it. They were like, sorry, we know you wanted a release date, but they're still not ready to give us one at the time of publication. It's still, you know, it's crazy to me that even today, when basically you just press a button and it goes up online, I guess they have to have a physical copy as well still. Darn it! But that's why, you know, print still has a very long lead time. Uh, in terms of, you know, preparing their coverage, which again, seems ridiculous in today's day and age, but I guess they still haven't found a way to print this stuff up faster. I guess it takes time to lay it out. I don't know, I think they should fix that. It's, it makes them a little bit archaic. But anyway, they don't have a release date. And it's not like Disney announced one today. Disney wasn't like, we'll help you out and we'll, we'll release one in tandem. We still don't have a release date, but all hope is not lost for this week because later on Thursday, this Thursday, there's a Disney earnings call at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Anyone can listen in. Just go to their investor website. I'll put a link down below if you'd like to listen in. It's an interesting experience at the very least. Um, and you can hear it right from Bob Chapek's lips uh, or whoever announces it. It probably will be him. Uh, once other people start getting on the call and Bob Chapek leaves, that's probably the end of anything particularly interesting. But I'll listen to the whole thing. So anyway, they could announce a start date because I think finally having a Marvel Disney Plus show coming to, uh, coming, you know, being available would certainly help to boost investor confidence. And what is sure to be a bleak call because, you know, I think Disney will have lost even more money. So they'll be looking for ways to cheer everyone up so we could see a couple of interesting announcements. Uh, don't expect the Disney Plus adult section to be announced because there's a whole day talking about their digital strategy set for December. So that's probably when they'll talk about that. I hope we don't have to wait that long for a WandaVision announcement. It's supposed, you know, it's coming soon. All right, I'm sure Disney's just as frustrated as you are. All right, so anyway. Uh, there's not too much of reveals again in the, in, the, in the Entertainment Weekly articles, but we will go over what they do reveal throughout this video. Uh, but first off, I want to talk about, uh, well, I think that the reason there aren't a lot of reveals are that A, as the article points out, Kevin Feige, with coronavirus wreaking havoc on his carefully planned MCU schedule, I mean, Feige is a planner. So he's working hard to avoid spoilers because now his whole damn story is out of order. And B, I believe this article, as I said, is about winning over not just fans, but the industry in the hopes of maybe getting the MCU some awards wins in major categories. Because TV embraces genre and kitsch entertainment far more than the Oscars do. And like the Oscars, they love to pat themselves on the back. And WandaVision celebrates the sitcom. So Marvel is hoping that fans and the industry, really the industry, will respond to that. And what a cover photo, by the way. Elizabeth Olsen looks fantastic. She is positively glowing. I mean, Paul Bettany looks nice too, but Elizabeth Olsen is the star of that photo. She is, she always looks great, as I said, but that's maybe the best I've ever seen her look. She just, she is giving off such strong Mary Tyler Moore vibes, who's right up there with, right up there with Lucille Ball as the queen, uh, as queens of the sitcom. Mary Tyler Moore, in fact, had two famous sitcoms, of course, The Dick Van Dyke Show and uh, The Mary Tyler Moore Show. 
But I don't believe, speaking of that cover, that it was a great idea to put that uh, little note on the front that's saying Marvel is coming to dominate TV like it does the box office. If I were Kevin Feige, and I'm sure he had approval on this, I'd be like, don't write that. <laughs> because over the past year or so, the MCU has emerged as a bit of a villain in the, in the movie industry because it soaks up release dates and audience interest so that there's really not that much left for everyone else. So I'm sure TV is like, whoa, get out of here. We've, this has been a refuge for us. I mean, Entertainment Weekly's cover hints that TV might be the next gem for Feige to add to his Infinity Gauntlet. But I, I mean, I guess Feige did let that, that go. Um, maybe he didn't have a say. But I think overall, especially based on this article, Feige clearly wants to play nice. You know, Feige's human like the rest of us. After world domination, he wants some recognition. Spielberg wanted it eventually. That's why he made Schindler's List, you know, for other reasons, of course. But he wanted an Oscar. Everyone in their... Everyone, Nolan is like... He's like, uh, you know, Ahab searching for an Oscar with his work. I mean, at some point, every creative wants recognition, you know, their, their peers to recognize that they've contributed. And I'm sure Feige who would get, if this was named best uh, best show, best uh, comedy, he would, I don't know if it would be a comedy or a drama. Interesting, Foggy, where's it gonna go? It might even just be a mini series, because uh, it's just, as you'll see, six one hour episodes. And I don't think there's gonna be a season two. So it might be a mini series, but Foggy would be the one to go up there and get that award for, you know, because he's the main producer. Pretty good. Uh, he, I think he really wants to start getting that recognition, which might be one of the reasons that he's doing more representation on the film side as well. Who cares why he's doing it? It's great. All right, so anyway, and he does deserve recognition, I think. I don't think he deserves to be vilified. I think he's done incredible things, especially as everyone cries and nobody wants to go to the movies anymore. What do you guys want? We want him to go to the movies, but we want him to go to the movies to see what we want them to. It's ridiculous. All right, so anyway, the Entertainment Weekly article points out the extreme steps Marvel has taken to not only honor the sitcom, but to replicate it. From shooting in front of a live studio audience, I can't believe that nobody broke their NDA. Now, on that note, because, you know, you would think somebody would break it, right? Like, what are you going to do, Marvel? I think what happens, it happened is that uh, just like their test screenings, Marvel probably used friends and family. And so you're not going to sell out your friends and family members who work for Marvel. That's, that's Marvel's safety net. That's how they handle this stuff. Warner Brothers just invites anybody, and they break their non-disclosure agreements all the time. Although, you know, I always wonder if Marvel is getting honest feedback if it's from friends and family, right? What'd you think? Oh, it was fantastic! Uh, and, you know, Marvel always does kind of the same thing. And, you know, I'm sure their friends and family are like, we love it, although everyone loves it. And I do think that Feige is taking more chances now uh, because he's, you know, his, I think his success and his audience is, is set. Uh, but Warner Brothers doesn't get honest feedback either, quite frankly. I mean, remember the strong uh, word of mouth Birds of Prey had from its test screenings, and that just did not connect with audiences. It did connect with some people, um, but, you know, it's still the least successful DC EU movie. But anyway, for those scenes shot sitcom style, old school effects were used uh, uh, to do it live, like wires, like from Bewitched and I Dream of Jeannie. And uh, a companion article mentions that Randall Park and Kat Dennings uh, have sitcom experience and how that was a plus. So that, I think, indicates they might show up in some of Wanda's sitcoms as well. That would be fantastic. They're both very talented comedic actors. I love both of them. I'm so glad Randall Park is back. Uh, the article also reveals that Feige and his team even sat down to lunch with Disney legend Dick Van Dyke at Disneyland during D23. It's a full Disney flush to ask him about his experience making the Dick Van Dyke show on which WandaVision is heavily based. Uh, WandaVision also, it's revealed, partially shot on the Warner Brothers lot, right? Hey, Warner Brothers, where so many famous sitcoms have filmed their own exteriors. These are the kind of behind the scenes stories that awards voters eat up. Feige also adds that he's the one, he's the one who decided to focus on celebrating the sitcom. That's right, toot your own horn, Feige, somebody's gotta do it. And also, I think, to show that he's not just a shrewd businessman, but he has good creative ideas as well. And he said he picked the sitcom to celebrate because he not only grew up loving Nick at night, but even today, before going to work, he watches an old sitcom in the morning. Ah, uh, what a great picture. Sometimes I like to do that, too. Especially after I discovered so many great sitcoms around Hulu, as I told you. And I actually myself grew up uh, watching I Love Lucy 
uh, during the summers and the mornings. It was great. Uh, I think a lot of us have that story. Down below, I would love to hear what sitcom that you have grown up with and which, which sitcoms are your favorite and that you really enjoy. Everybody has the sitcom that, that they discovered. All right, so anyway, he watched, so why does he watch a sitcom before he goes to work? To escape from the stress of the modern world, just like Wanda wants to escape. Eh? What an awards narrative. It's fantastic. And these photos from just the Dick Van Dyke part of the show, again, no spoilers here, they are quite charming. My favorite is this one of Wanda and Vision in two twin beds. Look at the uh, eye mask that Vision has on as well in their, in their fantastic pajamas. And that's, this is the way all married couples used to be portrayed on television, which is hilarious because anyone could walk into their parents' room and see that there were not two twin beds there. <laughs> so stupid. But anyway, even more so, this is even better. The sitcom is currently dying out with no major sitcom on the air currently after Big Bang Theory ended last year. But sitcoms were popular for decades, not just since the dawn of television, but even back to radio. I mean, for instance, I don't know if you know this, I also grew up listening to old radio tapes. They're fantastic. I Love Lucy was a television adaptation of a very popular radio sitcom, My Favorite Husband, which also starred Lucille Ball before she uh, married Desi Arnaz. And most of the same creative team from behind the camera on My Favorite Husband went on to do I Love Lucy. In fact, if you're familiar with My Favorite Husband, you'll notice that some of the episodes have very similar storylines. It's great. It was a great show, a great, well, a great radio show. So there is a chance that WandaVision, by the way, could reach even beyond the MCU's loyal fandom to older audiences who are intrigued by this concept. As I told you before, my parents, who are a bit marveled out, and they never were truly into Marvel. You know, they had like, they have their favorite characters. My mom's favorite character is Iron Man, and my dad's favorite character is Bucky, because he has the best action sequences. But they just were, they don't, they're not intrigued, and it's too much work. They just aren't, they, well, you know, they follow a lot of stuff, but they're just not into following the, the Marvel story to them. It's, it's just, they're just not into it. But I gotta tell you, when they saw the WandaVision trailer during the Emmys, which, by the way, it debuted during the Emmys, they were, they were mighty impressed. They really, really liked it. And they were like, tell us more about this show. We think we'll watch it. I can't even get them to watch The Mandalorian. They've tried it, and they don't care for it. But they're excited for WandaVision. And you know who else is older? A lot of awards voters. Genius! That said, Marvel is not resurrecting the sitcom with uh, WandaVision because the MCU has to pl please its core fan base as well. And that itch would not be scratched by having to just watch a sitcom, <laughs> right? 30 minute episodes, I don't think people would like that. So expect the sitcom to live within the world of the show as we've already kind of seen from the trailer. I mean, there are clear shots that do not have a studio audience. It is quite beautiful also to hear Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany talk about their characters in this Entertainment Weekly coverage, how they've escaped to this sitcom world that Wanda creates to try and carve out a safe life for themselves, her pain mixed with his curiosity, but the real world just won't leave them alone. Oh, I love it. Olsen and, Bettany, Olsen and Bettany also talk about the joy of filming before a live studio audience and getting live laughs, comparing it to putting on a play. My God, these are great award campaign sound bites. I mean, people have such disdain for Marvel from an artistic standpoint, it's great to say, oh, but this was like a play, and everyone will go, ooh, tell me more. Ah, tell me more, there we go. All right, so what do we learn from this article besides Marvel's trying to get some Emmys and Golden Globes? Well, WandaVision will be six one-hour episodes. That's made, well, they don't actually say it, but they, they pretty much do within the context of the article. Catherine Hahn's character is confirmed to be named Agnes, which is extremely close to Agatha, as in Agatha Harkness, a major character from Wanda's story in the comics, who I've discussed with you many times at this point, and it's been rumored Han will be, and it's been rumored for some time that Han will be playing her. And that Scarlet Witch also will play a key role in Doctor Strange 2. Key. That does not so much refer to screen time as it does importance to the story and seems to confirm the rumors that I've heard and reported to you that Wanda breaks open the multiverse at the end of WandaVision that's dealt with in Spider-Man 3 and then resolved in Doctor Strange 2. Doctor Strange, of course, it's already been confirmed, will be appearing in both Spider-Man 3 and Doctor Strange 2 meaning we're going to see Wanda go mad and have to be saved. It's very similar to the Dark Phoenix storyline, which Feige himself has never gotten to tell, but Fox has told twice now, and done a horrible job both times. And I don't think anyone wants to see the Phoenix storyline attempted a third time, even by Feige, for a very long time. So this is his chance to tell his version of that story with Wanda. 
So do you think WandaVision has a shot at Emmy and Golden Globe greatness? And what do you think of this new information? Share your thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.